there's a quote from a song that Leonard Cohen has. It's there's a crack, a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Put a piggy in the bowl for the doggy. That was oh. the end of that. Elliot, I think the Tios oh, are here. Oh, there's some Tios. Who do you see? Okay. Yeah, go see, yeah, go see. Hi, Anna. Hello. Hi. Happy birthday. Thank you. It's nice to see you. Oh, thank you. Oh, cool. And there we go. Oh, they're beautiful. Thank you. Gazing out like a Jezebel in a cautionary tale. She said, I swear that isn't true. You throw me to the lions. You throw me to the lions. You throw me to the lions. I've always thought of my life as a long journey. The idea of gathering an understanding of things over a long period of time and being patient in that process. Both of my parents were, were artists. home, I would have any art supply I needed at my fingertips. I could build whatever I wanted, draw whatever I wanted. We also lived in Calgary, so we were very close to the mountains, and we used to spend the whole summers up in the mountains. Over time, I would gather knowledge and understanding of building materials and how they come together and how they interact with each other and how to use them to their best ability. I dreamt that later in my 50s and 60s, I'd, I'd come out with a body of work that would be sort of legacy building. I'd be able to bring things together and really create spaces that, that impacted people. We met online. She's very, very expressive with her words, and that was something that I was really attracted to. She's, uh, she's incredibly loyal and loving, and she's a real life partner. were very into organic food and healthy food, so I, I never got candy growing up. And so when I would go to the grocery store, there would be the candy machines, and my parents would never give me money for candies, of course. So I used to, when they weren't looking, I used to crawl underneath the machines and grab all the, the candy that was on the floor. And really, I like to joke all the time that that's probably what gave me cancer. The cancer has spread from its initial spot it's moved into my lungs and my liver. 
And once that happens, cancer is no longer curable. There are moments that I feel empowered is there's a bit of a cause behind the situation. There's not a lot of knowledge around or exposure to metastatic breast cancer. And a lot of people don't understand that breast cancer can kill you in your 30s or 20s, right? So to try and find a way to advocate, it, 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 it sort of is a platform to try and make a change in the world to sort of t to tell our story, to, to let it be known that, that this is happening to people. People are dying from breast cancer in their 30s. I've now been coming here for over a year and a half now, and it's a huge chemo unit. People now know me and recognize me. <laughs> You're a rock star. I'm a, yes, I'm the chemo rock star. Yeah. Yeah, so. I've been searching and trying to find a community of individuals who are in the same situation, and there's a hole, there's nothing there. So I would like to try to create a network for young adults with metastatic cancer. You know how I'm always bringing up stuff about legacy? I've sort of started to think about it in three ways. A legacy for myself as a human being, a legacy for me as a mother, and then a legacy for myself in the cancer community. So what, what Alicia and I are going to try to do is try to put together a community of people with advanced and metastatic cancer. The problem is, is trying to find people. With a social worker. I was going to say, yeah, like the social worker. Social worker? No, the oncology department. Yeah. Yeah. The patient centers, like a yeah. Sunny Brook. I feel like there's not enough information given through the hospital about support that's there. Well, somehow we all found each other, which was, I know I was afraid to go to, to group. A lot of the things that sort of get discussed in support groups that get discussed in like conferences like yeah mm -hmm. like they just mm -hmm. you know, yeah. really, really focuses on the survivorship, the survivorship. yeah and getting it's through and returning over. to life which is yeah. yes a struggle. And, it's an, and it's an important thing yeah. to, to cover and to help people with but it's not the only it's not the it's not mm -hmm. yeah. it's not to young adults. no not no. at all one of the interesting things that happens when you get cancer as a young person is you um you know, you had all these dreams of what you would do. So in terms of a legacy for myself, I've designed a house. I have a little one-story bungalow. Well, I guess all bungalows are one-story. <laughs> so the idea is to top it. As you've been going along and you're designing and planning, have you sort of written out your thoughts and maybe the story? And... I really want to have that connection from, from my heart to my hands to the page, or my heart to my hands to a building, this direct kind of relationship. And it's been really, 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 really hard for me to write letters to my children. I don't want to say things to them that put pressure on them, right? So I've started trying to create these books so that they know what I was trying to accomplish. That's a very good idea. That actually might be something that would be helpful for a future partner of Ian's. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I could also set up an online profile for him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you could also yeah. just like pre-choose yeah. the future mother of your children. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Would okay. be a better cook? That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> The term survivor is a very isolating term for people with metastatic disease because you're never ever going to be a survivor. For me, my greatest fear is passing away before my children can remember me. I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old and I think back of what 
I was like at that point, and I don't really remember my mom. I can remember like moments, little moments. We live in three month increments. You do a scan, you get your results, you say, okay, it's stable. That's good. That means you have another three months, right? It's really hard to live in that place. It's a terrifying situation to be in. I feel sort of desperate in a way of, to try and find some way that I can talk to them or they can feel the spirit of me after I pass. I've been trying to create little objects for moments in their life. I like tooth fairy jars or bowls or special, special objects that they can have, that they can interact, that I've made with my hands. About this book. This book is a collection of things I find interesting and meaningful. It's for you, Elliot, and also my all. I want to find a way for you to know me. I want to let you know that you and my all and your dad are the most important things in my life. I love you so much. I'm sorry I can't be f be there for you as I wanted to be. Just know that as you embrace and explore all the moments in your life, my love, my pride, and my joy is with you. I love you. There's this beautiful movie, My Architect, which is Louis Kahn's son. His father passed away when he was younger. And him going and searching out his father's buildings and experiencing his father's buildings as a way of connecting with his father, which really struck, struck a chord with me. I want to create a house that represents the spirit of me, not just the story of me. It's the spirit of the building. It's the way that the human being interacts with the building. It's all about the experience of the individual. And also a space that cares for them after I pass away. I want to leave the world with me still in it. Hi, guys. Listen, Looney Tunes. Ready? One, two, three. Just very slippy, love. OK. Play yeah, up here. and then so it's going to come, it will overhang, we can go out and use it in the rain and all that sort of stuff. Right, right, right. Okay. Right? Being young and having children, we're not really in the, in the financial position to do a big renovation. Which is an interesting situation because there, there is the conflict between my bucket list and the needs of my family. I think, so what we look at is extending the back out, making the back a little bit more playful and organic, which is kind of working with what I was trying to do, which scares you, right? Playful and organic, <laughs> when you're talking about a house, scares me. Why is that? Well, I don't know what that means. 
means that that I'm what I'd like to do is make a make a three dimensional Kirby facade on the back. Oh, like you know, architects don't necessarily have a reputation for staying on budget. So oh, but I, I, I have a feeling when you say it's a you know business in the front. Uh, and then the party in the back is where all the money is going to like get lost, right? <laughs> We're going to have this incredible roof in the back with well, incredible things, lines, but um, is is like. Uh, but there's ways there's ways of doing things that are not that are not super expensive, and there's ways we can sort of save money and be clever and creative about right. space, right? Yeah, like no flooring in the house. We'll just plywood, <laughs> right? And we'll have a beautiful party in the back, though. <laughs> It's not going to be like that. Right, OK. There is the potential that we start a renovation and I pass away in the middle of the renovation, which leaves my husband with a huge amount of chaos, dealing with the loss of his wife, and then trying to provide for his family and a house that's half built. Being able to do it and finish it and get it done the way she wants it, right? I mean, that's, that's the challenge. You know, that she's not alive when it's done. That would be a fear. And a reality. Could be. Right? We can't do it fast enough. So I'm a bit... I'm a bit nervous. We're going into my office, the place that I used to work at before I got sick. I have pretty meaningful relationships with Maureen and Anna. I think that they're the best people to be able to support Ian if something happens to me. When I was in my early 20s and a teenager, I used I was I didn't have very much or it didn't have breasts. Well, I had a little bit, but and I, I always find it ironic that I used to make jokes all the time about, you know, th things I would do to get breasts. And then when I got a little older, I, I finally did get breasts, and what ended up is they, <laughs> that's what's going to kill me is my breasts. It's a joke on a ride. Hi. How are you doing? Hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> Just give you a big oh. Hi. 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 Nice to see you. I'm, I'm doing. I'm doing. I'm doing. Great glasses. Thank you. How are you? Good. Good. Good to see you. Yeah. For this project, you're, you're not rebuilding your whole house. You're putting an addition on your house. Is yeah. that right? What we're thinking about? Yeah. So I yeah. have a little. Mm -hmm. I have a little yeah. bungalow. Yeah. Little concrete block angel mm -hmm. stone bungalow, yeah. which yeah. I picked out just because I thought it was ugly enough that it, <laughs> it it wouldn't be a problem to to change it right yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and so my idea is, is i want to put a second and third story on oh, it oh wow okay. so we're not talking little addition okay. yeah <laughs> okay yeah. well we've we've both built houses yeah. recently so you know we're, <laughs> so we're here for you yeah. yeah so what do you want to do next do you want to come back here or do you want us to come to your place and have a little visit sure you could yeah, coming to my place would probably be a good I think I think we okay. should do that, sure. right? Have a look at the house. And... Yeah. When I'm designing and drawing something, I like to start with the image of a, of a person and then build the environment around that person. Right now, I'm transferring, I'm putting images of my children. I'm drawing the little niche that kind of creates a little fort for my kids. Just their, their bed area and the window area, so their little bedroom. Hey. 
if something happens and I pass away, then then they'll have they'll have the comfort of each other together. You're trying to set up situations, hopefully that they'll you know learn to support each other, that kind of stuff. Hi hey, guys. Good morning. Good morning. I mean, one of the ideas I had was to take this roof and tip it and make it a sedum roof so you're oh, sitting you're in a it. bush. I don't know yeah. exactly yeah. like that, but I Something play with like this that. and maybe it peels up in a little section yeah. over yeah. Yeah, here, yeah. right? Yeah. So you can have this kind of relationship of indoor, outdoor. Right. Uh, Miles bedroom and Elliot's bedroom. Mm -hmm. Right now what I want to do is I want to lift up their beds, mm -hmm. so build a millwork bed. And so that underneath the two beds, they'll have a communal space. So <laughs> underneath the, yeah. the walls can slide. That's yeah. nice. That's, that's the point. The right, right spot yeah. for it, to, right? Show your kids who you are. Yeah. Do you have chemo again next week now? or? Yeah, so I should be okay. Um, late in the week? Late in the week. So I think if you come in Friday, yeah. you should have like some sketches. We can look yeah. at it again. I feel a bit of a sense of urgency to get this this project done because really I want to be able to make I want to be part of it I want to be able to to make memories for my kids and not have this be some dream that that gets built after I pass away I want to be part of the memories of this spot Dealing with cancer and having a young family and balancing everything is too much. Renovating your house where you have to move out and find funds and resources to stretch yourself. No, 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 we're not opening up anymore. We've got like, we've opened up like 10 cans of Play-Doh. No, here. you can't open up no anymore. More. I mean, it's, it's a lot just to, like, kind of survive through this. Yeah. Let alone saying, I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna no be hassle. creative and do all no these boy. drawings and get all this stuff done because it's like, it's kind of too much. Yeah, but it's, it's something I, it's something really important to do, right? I, I, like, I, I agree. I, I mean, I, like I, right. And I just have to set realistic deadlines, right? So that, so that I'm not working on like just two days to try and get something done. I have to like take into account. You're gonna be tired. Yeah, Cause, I know. Cause what happens I know, is but you, I have it gets to, out of control, right? I know, but what I have to do is work in the time that I have efficiently, right? You, you push it too hard and then it's just a disaster. I know. It ends up being difficult and I'm by myself and, and I don't have any help from you to deal with the kids because it's very hard on me, right? If you're in this zone of stress in addition of just the regular stress that we have, which is already a lot. Mayel, don't eat the Play-Doh. No, no. Mayel, spit it out. No, yucky, no, out. yucky. Spit it, open it. I don't think your... she has anything yes, in her she mouth. does. Come on, you spit it all out? <laughs> So it's fine, we just gotta manage it better, right? Like, you know, the combination of having chemo and all this other crap, right? And then, and it's not like a comment on your abilities to be able to cope with it. I mean, I think you do a great job with what you have to deal with, but it's just too much. Stop eating the Play-Doh. But we don't, I don't have a choice. I don't have a choice because I love my wife and it's something I know that will make her happy. And when you have a partner that has terminal cancer or advanced cancer or, again, whatever we want to call it, you have to, you have to do things that make them happy. Okay. Okay, listen, we're going to go downstairs, okay? I love you. I, I, I'm not saying that stuff to upset you or I anything know. like that, I right? Know. Like, I know. I know. Okay. Come on, Elliot. She just loves it. My dad grabbed a teddy. 
Does she? Where's your teddy? Go get a teddy. <laughs> I'm building a model of just a small version of the house. I'm trying to model the, the green roof area. Green roofs can be a lot of things. It's usually what it means is a planted roof. So what I'm trying to achieve is having moments where you're bringing the garden into the house. And also to, to, to show my kids that, you know, things don't have to have to be what you expect them to be like it also can be something that has you know cuts out cutouts and spaces don't have to be as you expect them to be i i think the scale of my my roof is a little bit <laughs> a little bit small for goat but potentially maybe they could have rabbits out there talking about? Well, I think what we'll do is we'll go over the plans and look at the little models and maybe talk about what I'm trying to achieve and the little drawings that I'm trying to achieve. And you brought your wallet. That's the most important thing. Really? Interesting. <laughs> bring my wallet. There's no money oh, in sorry, it, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> checkbook. That, yeah, I can bring that too. I can bounce checks all day long. <laughs> no, seriously, is that going to be a conversation today or no? Maybe there'll be a little bit of a, a vague discussion about a budget and say we're like trying to keep within. If what you've done is like 500 grand, yeah, I don't have $500,000 to spend. Right. So, and I can't get $500,000 to spend. I don't want to say no, right? I don't want to prevent you from getting what you want, but at the same time, it's not like we're operating a... We're millionaires? Yeah, I mean, I'm not, right? But I am, luckily. I don't haven't, haven't really? told you that until this Interesting. Until You're this out, one. Huh? Nice. <laughs> I'm actually a princess. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> that would make a whole lot of sense. Okay. Ugh. How are you? Good. Sorry, we're a bit late. No, that's okay. Hi, Good you. to see you. Good to see you, too. Okay, so I'll show you... Actually, maybe I'll show you the overall house. Okay. So this is the first stage. This is the front of the house. Which one? This? Yeah. Okay. The problem with this is you end up getting some huge height. So what I did was I flipped the roof. Now this roof is very expressive and potentially goes into the neighbor's property. Okay. So it needs, to be, <laughs> it needs to be cut back a little bit. And this is, I'm making a little wooden model that's looking at it in a little bit more detail. Howdy. Hey, Marie. Hey, how are you? Nice to Hello. see you. How are you? Good. I'll pull up a chair over here. So we've been thinking about actually how to make this happen right. because all of, all of this talk and meeting with you and going to your house and we are, we are determined actually to find a way to make this happen. We want to see if we can hold together you know, some kind of fundraising event. This is not going to be easy. No, no. And no, I think, for sure. I also think it's important that actually it move quickly and yeah, yeah. and let us help you. Let us assign sure. some real resources to it. I don't want this to slip by. I don't want this to be architects just talking about something nice. Yeah. Right? I want it to be real. Yeah. And I know all of us do. And I know we, we <laughs> haven't. Here, I'm going to come and sit next to you. <laughs> We think it's important, right? Yeah. And, yeah. We're, and we're all here. We're going to make it happen. And then I know how to build houses. We've done it recently. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? 
think you have a really great plan happening, and so that's what we're going to do. Yeah, and just so that you know, Ian and Anna, like we're here till it is done, like okay. till you have the key and you're you're in, and until they find the cure, and then I can come back and exactly. Yeah. 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 We still have your best. Then friend. she's back. I know. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. She'll be back like bolder yeah, than, yeah, bolder yeah. than yeah. ever. Yeah. I would have forgotten everything, but I'll. <laughs> Send me a sign. I don't know how high you climb. Here we go. So, happy birthday, Anna. We all love you very much. And, and we're lucky to have you in our life. So, cheers. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I'll, I'll say my good day. Happy birthday. Happy cheers. I'm so happy that we've become friends. You're very special to me. Thank you. I love you, I love you, I love you. Through a Something has to be done about this situation. We have to have, you know, access to drugs, access to, to trials. There has to be more research done, not just breast cancer awareness and feeling good. There has to be money put into saving those of us who are dying from it. Terrifying sky. The difference between having regular breast cancer is you're standing away from the cliff. But with having metastatic cancer, you're standing right at the edge of the cliff, waiting waiting to jump. I'll always love you. I would let you in. No matter if the sin was mortal. I'll always love you. I could not pretend to be a way that's different than I am. I'll always love you. So you somehow have to find yourself in your diagnosis and be able to live with it as you're living every moment for what it is, but also you're sort of living life fast, but not every second has to count. You also have to accept that you're a human being and embrace being human. Different than I am. I'll always.